The first reason your videos look like Bruh. shit is that your lighting sucks. If you're standing under the overhead lights in a room like this, you're gonna get raccoon eyes, it's gonna look terrible. What you wanna do is stand in front of a window like that right there, except that it's nighttime. So if it's night, just get a light like this. It's like 20 bucks. Doesn't matter which ones, they're all freaking the same. Get a cheap light and do that, attach it to your phone and bam. You've got nice lighting like this. By the way, the reason your videos look terrible isn't your camera. I'm just using my iPhone. It looks fine. You can also make it look a little better like this. Alexa lights off. Alexa sand lamp on. Oh, look at this with a little Amazon light bulb and a $20 light. You've got a setup that looks pretty dang cool with your phone. The second reason your videos look terrible is because you didn't clean your lens, man. Don't even have to have a fancy lens tissue. I just like grab my shirt. Uh, do that, and uh, suddenly I don't look like a smeary ghost. Wipe your lens off, dude. It's not hard. Did I get it all? The third reason your videos make me want to puke is your background looks terrible. Like, nobody wants to see that. Clean up the background. Go somewhere where it looks better. Pick up your papers. It, it's not hard, man. Number four, your, your framing sucks. Like, if you're down here at the bottom of the screen, it looks like a big old mistake. Or if you're like, look it up your nose, like nobody wants to see that, dude. For a talking head video, you generally wanna be like, and I'm looking at myself, that's another thing, don't, don't look at yourself, look at the lens, but you wanna be right here in the center of the frame with your head near the top of the frame, you leave a little bit of space, not this, not dead center, like right here, a little bit of space on top and framed nicely in the center. If you wanna be a little more artistic and it's not necessarily a talking head video, you could use the grid. There's a grid with like two lines each way, like a tic-tac-toe thing like you see on the screen right here. And you wanna be in the intersection of those lines, like your face for a talking head video could be in the intersection like right about here. I think that's the intersection. And you want something to offset it on the other side so it doesn't look weird. I've got these photos offsetting me. So you could frame yourself like this as well, but be aware of your framing. Reason number five, you took way too long to get to the point. Nobody wants to hear, Hi, my name's Trevor. I was a Hollywood editor, and I'm a YouTuber, and I used to sell real estate, and these are my credentials. Like, nobody gives a shit. Just get right to it. If you've got a list of top tens, do what I did. Reason number one, bam. If you're still using an intro on your social media videos, freaking delete it. Never use an intro ever, ever again. No one wants to see it. Mistake number six, your audio is freaking awful. You're standing in an echo chamber, 50 feet away from a microphone, that doesn't work. Or you're filming next to noise like a fridge or running water or your kids or the, the dishwasher's grinding. Like, dude, nobody wants to hear that. Marginal video is forgivable, but bad audio, they will click away faster than you can say, what's that noise? I think Bigfoot's scratching at my front door because I live in a freaking forest. Let's go see. Ah. It's the evil cat. Bring cat. Anyone want a cat? You can have him. I'm done with him. The issue isn't your mic. If your audio sounds bad, you probably have too much background noise or you're in an echoey room with no soft surfaces. Look at this. Soft surfaces. Notice it sounds better in here. Couches, curtains, carpet, all that stuff works. You don't need to get sound panels. But mostly you're just probably too far away from the freaking microphone. Get close to the mic. I'm like... 14 inches away from the microphone, even though it's my iPhone mic, which is just okay. This stuff sounds fine. But even in this room where it's been treated for sound to a degree, it doesn't sound great when I'm 10 feet away from the camera. Get close to the freaking mic, guys. And if you wanna be far away from the camera, you can get a lavalier mic with a 20 foot cable for like 15 bucks. The next issue is your audio is inconsistent. Sometimes it's really and sometimes it's really loud and it's jarring because people will turn it up when you're talking low. And then when you talk loud, it's gonna blast their headphones out. Don't do that. Make all the levels even. You do it like this. Let's jump into CapCut. I'll show you what I'm talking about. If we look here on the timeline, I can see these waveforms. Me talking loud, me whispering, talking loud, whispering. I'm just doing that on purpose to make a point. And we can hear what it sounds like. Audio is inconsistent. Sometimes it's really and sometimes it's really loud. So it's obviously not great. In real life, 
you'll be recording different situations. I film with my wife and she talks low, I talk loud. You need to bring all the levels up to, like I bring them super loud, I bring them up to like minus one dB. If you're in CapCut and you wanna see what the levels are, you can click on the little levels indicator here, like you can see and it. It's jarring because- See it's there, it's barely usable, barely visible. You just click on this guy and it shows up over here and now you can see the difference. And consistent, sometimes it's really low. So I'm down to like, you know, minus 20, minus 30 up here to minus one. What you wanna do is have all the levels be the same. So you just click on this guy, you click on audio, and you select normalize loudness and watch what happens to all these levels. And it tries to make them relatively consistent. A trick in CapCut is, it's like, oh, these are really loud, these are really low. If you just add a cut here and a cut here, it'll bring those up to be normal so that it matches the other ones. It'll do the same thing here. I'll add a cut here because it's looking like it's looking at this as an individual clip and add another cut here with Command B. And then now I'll trim this end off. I'll see that all these levels are the same. You can hear it. Consistent. Sometimes it's really low and sometimes it's really loud. So even though I'm whispering, you can still hear me. Just normalize your loudness. You can do this really easily in CapCut. It's also very doable in any other editing program on the planet that's worth owning. By the way, if you're a beginning editor and you want to learn to edit quickly, you can dink around on YouTube all day and research all the tutorials and spend five years trying to learn. Or you just take my course. I made a course called Edit with Trev and Master CapCut. V1's been out for almost two years, got hundreds of people using it, having killer results with it. And now I'm in the process of recreating it. V2, version two of Master CapCut will be out in the middle of November, 2025. And right now I've got a slam a deal going on. Version one was 97 bucks. Right now you can get version one, which is still super relevant for 49 bucks. Version two, when it comes out, is gonna be $129. But if you buy version one now for 49 bucks, you get version two for free. So I would grab it right now by going to mastercapcut.com, entering the coupon code heck yes right here when you go to checkout, or you can go to a link that's up up here or here. I do it now, dude. You're not gonna find a better deal or a better course. The eighth mistake you're probably making is using music wrong. And by wrong, I mean you're using music where you don't need it. For talking head videos, personally, I freaking hate music. Talking head, sometimes it can work for a little section. It's a personal choice. But if you are going to use music when there is speaking, and sometimes it is very appropriate, you wanna make sure that the music isn't too loud and doesn't overpower the speaker. Let's do an example with that clip we just did. I'm gonna just jump into CapCut where they have a bunch of royalty free music you can use for free. I'll just, uh, the first one, I don't know, hip hop backgrounds. Take this guy, I'm gonna just trim it up a little bit right here by typing the keystroke W, hit Shift Z so this all fills the timeline. Now let's see how it sounds. The next issue is your audio is inconsistent. Sometimes it's really low and sometimes it's really loud. And it's just so music thumping, you can barely hear me. You just gotta turn it down, man. You can just click and drag this down a little bit. I like to have it somewhere between minus 12 and minus 20 dB. You get more precise up here. I'm gonna go down to like, I don't know, minus 18 is probably gonna be great. Another trick is if you're speaking, use music that has only instruments and no vocals. But here we are with vocals and me speaking, see how it sounds. The next issue is your audio is inconsistent. Sometimes it's really low and some- So that music level is about right. And here's a pro tip for you. When you do pause, if you're going to leave pauses in your edits, you want to bring the music up, like right here, look at this. After headphones out, don't do that. Headphones out, the music was still low. You want the music to thump there, how do you do that? Well, I just click on this music track, I go to basic, I set a keyframe, a keyframe marks the beginning or the end of a change in a property. The property we're gonna change is audio levels. And I'm gonna go forward here to where the music needs to go down again and add another keyframe right there. I'm gonna go back a couple frames and I'm going to raise this up to zero. And I go to this keyframe here, the way you jump to that keyframe is by hitting the left arrow here. Go board forward a couple frames and bring this up to zero so it's loud again and watch what happens. Look at this, so the music dips when I'm speaking and you raise it when there's a pause, even if it's just a half a second. I did that in Hollywood all the time. I was working on movies for you know Marvel, Disney, working on those commercials, and you always raise the music when anybody's not speaking. So here you go, almost always. Ask their headphones out. Don't do that. Make all so it fills the voice, and then you can smooth that out a little more. I would probably have it be less jarring 
and smear this out just a tiny bit more like that. And you can play with it till it sounds good, but you want it just to just to flow. Let's see. Headphones out. Don't do that. Make all pretty good, right? Mistake number nine is you're leaving in the pauses, the ums, and the ahs. Nobody's got time for your ums and your ahs and your thinking. Get rid of all your thinking in your edit and cap cut. It's super easy. I'm going to show you examples using that thing I just recorded because it's it's easy to show you. I am going to make sure that the track magnet is on. I've only got this track I'm worrying about. I'll have to readjust the music after, but this is how you get rid of the pauses, the ums, and the ahs. And in this situation, we can see these big pauses here because there's a big freaking gap where I'm not speaking. So I literally just position my playhead here and to add an edit right here and delete this part right here, I will just type the letter W, bam, and everything slides over. And I'm gonna be really precise here. I'm gonna get rid of this space here. I can zoom in more. The way you zoom in, by the way, on a Mac, you hold down the command key. On a PC, you hold down the control key and you just use your scroll wheel like that. So I do this, <gasps> look at that, my, my timeline zooming in and out. And I do that all day, every day, get, get good at that. And now I'm just gonna position my playhead here where the audio starts to get rid of this little chunk right here. I'm gonna type the letter, you know what the letter is? To add an edit and delete that, I type the letter Q, boom, and it just slides it right over. Now this is tighter. Consistent, sometimes it's... Right, better, better, better. And over here we got this big old pause, let's get rid of that one too. So because I don't want to get rid of all of that, I just want to get rid of this little space, I'm going to add an edit here. I do that with Command B, boom, on a Mac, and Control B on a PC, and Command B right here. I could do Command B there and then delete that, or I could just type the letter. What letter? To add an edit, delete all that space, slide it over, letter Q, bam, and now this is a tighter edit. Blast their headphones out. Don't do that. Make all the levels even. You do it like this. And then I would need to you know, get rid of these keyframes. I'm just gonna click on those guys and delete them. Just go delete and delete because there was no more pause. There's no need to do that. And hit delete, boom. And now it looks like this. Blast their headphones out. Don't do that. Make all the levels even. You do it like this. Perfection, bro. The 10th reason your videos look like shit is the colors. You want all the videos to match, look like they were shot by the same person on purpose for the same movie or the same YouTube video, or the same Instagram video. You don't want it to be all over the place. It's jarring when you got one really dark shot, one really light shot, one really vivid colors and one low contrast colors, unless you're doing it on purpose for a reason. And in the world of film, we have color correction, which fixes all of that stuff so it all looks consistent. And we have color grading that adds a look or a vibe. And there's a bunch. You could spend, you know, years studying color correction and color grading and learning DaVinci Resolve. But I'll show you a couple of the quickie things you do in CapCut. Just know that there is a lot more you can do in CapCut with the color. The most basic thing you can do is just auto adjust all the colors. Let's just look at these sample clips when we were sailing up from LA to San Francisco in the boat. And you know, they all look pretty consistent. We got a night shot, we got an indoor shot. These look pretty consistent because they were shot over the course of the same day or two in the same kind of location. But if you're doing some things, the colors could potentially be all over the place. But to make these more consistent, one thing you can do is just highlight all of them and just go to video adjust and select auto adjust. And then it bumps the colors up. I like it. It makes them pretty saturated and, you know, fairly, fairly consistent. So it's kind of a a cheap hack almost way to make the colors look better and slightly more consistent. But you can also color grade them really easily, add a look or a vibe to them, which makes them look even more consistent. In CapCut, if you jump over to filters, we have all of these different looks. And you go to your favorites and see ones that you really like a lot. It's really obvious if you choose black and white. I'll just choose elegant black and white. I just drag it down here and I drag it out across the timeline. And now I can see, oh, this stuff looks pretty freaking consistent. It's all black and white. But you can do that with colors too. I just delete that guy and I'll go over here to my favorites. You can favorite filters you like to get back to. What about this black gold look? That's gonna be, I think it's gonna be black and white with just gold, but it's kind of a cool look. Look at this. Oh wow, we got black and white and just the warm things like my face and hat. Yeah, and then the wieners are colorful as well. That's another way you can Add a look to it. If that's kind of look you're going for, there's been movies shot like that where they have just the red, whatever. You can do stuff like that. I'm going to show you one more country picnic so you can see what that looks like. You get an actual vibe that you might want to use. And then we have this kind of look, which is just kind of a gentle, subtle warming, I think. If we look at a shot with a human being, there's a human being. And if I turn that off like this, 
you can see it added a subtle, well, it's actually not that subtle of a color grade to this video. If you are really into color correction and color grading, I have a pretty complete video on it right, right there. But more important than that, you gotta learn to edit, take advantage of the deal. It goes on for like another, I don't know, it'll be like another week after this video drops, you probably have to get it. And you can get my course right there. 49 bucks, dude. Version one and version two comes later for free. I would jump on that right freaking now.